Hey everybody, this is Joe, the Over 40 Model Maker, coming at you with a final thoughts on the build that I have been doing. Uh, but before we get into that, I want you to uh, go ahead and if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribing is completely your option. I know a lot of them, a lot of other channels say, if you like what you see, hit like, subscribe, share, do all that. Okay, they have to do that because that's their job. I, on the other hand, don't have to because I already have a full-time job doing something outside the home, so that's what my basis income is. I just do this for a hobby, for fun, to try to get some, some uh, experience at doing this. I'm still learning, so bear with me if I do ums or skip over stuff or, uh, let's see right there do weird things, go ahead and leave in the comments like any critiques or any sort of um, advice you can give me to make this seem a lot smooth, a little bit more professional so that you can enjoy it as much as I do trying to produce these things. Along with that, go ahead and, and at the end of the video or towards the end of the video, I'm going to go ahead and kind of have a open poll of what is going to be the next project that we do. I have three choices for you guys, so um, leave that comment below with your answer, and then I will tally everything, and that's what we're going to have. So, what are we going to talk about today? We are doing the final thought on the entry grade RX-78 II Gundam that I had in the final video or the previous video with the unboxing, and I have to say. As of right now, this thing is double thumbs awesome. This thing was awesome to put together. It was awesome to look at. It was awesome to do some customizing on. And by customizing, I mean actually painting it. They already come, you know, the pieces already come painted. Like, you know, like red. And this isn't actually white, and I'll show you that later, the blue. But I actually went ahead and painted every piece of this to make it what I would like to go ahead and make it look like, because that's what you do with your models. You make them how you want to show them off to people. Uh, the plastic quality is excellent. A lot better than those G-frame ones at half the price. Remember, those G-frames were about $14. This was seven. $7 entry grade. And let me tell you, this thing, and I'll put it side by side next to uh, an actual high grade of the Granddaddy Gundam. Other than what you actually put together, you could barely tell which one was which. Which I think is fantastic if you're going to introduce somebody into the world of Gundam model making. Now, one thing I do have to let you know about is right here it says no tools required. Okay, that is kind of a misleading thing, and I'll show you why here in a second. Um, here, let me grab this, this right here. Okay, first off, see how it's kind of an off-white thing? I'll show you the final product here, and you see how off this is, is from my final uh, paint scheme. But right here, you see where it attaches to the sprues, a lot of multiple point connections where like this one right here, we have one, two, three, four. If you were trying to twist this out, you'd either be doing it a very long time or using so much force that you would either snap it off, deform it, press something in. Even though this is like a hard plastic, Sometimes you can push something out of whack and then it just doesn't uh, look right or fit right. So you definitely want to go ahead and get yourself a pair of nippers. Now on an entry grade, you know, the $5 nippers you get from Walmart will be just fine. Because even that leaves very little nub marks to where you could sand them smooth and either leave them or paint them however you want to do it. 
but I highly suggest if you do get this kit, have a pair of nippers or some sort of side cutters or something to cut the pieces out instead of just trying to get them out by hand. Uh, it'll make for a more refreshing, more enjoyable build. So we'll put that off to the side. Other than that, the pieces together snapped wonderfully in place. Nothing was wasted as far as spare parts or whatever. Every piece was used. Every space on those sprues were used. And so without further ado, let me go ahead, get that out of the way, and let me show you, ta-da, the final product. Now, it had been kind of a windy, humid day here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, so with the spray painting of the shield here, I do have some splatter spots, but again, ah, it doesn't bother me any. Now, as you can see, this guy is stark white. On the sprues, it was kind of more of an off-white. And I just wanted to go ahead and, you know, make it as white as possible. The reds, the reds were actually pretty much spot on, but I kind of put uh, a gloss spray on them. And then I actually put a little matte top coat on it, which kind of dulled it down a little bit, which I think actually, to me anyways, looks pretty good. The blue was a lot darker, and let me show you what that blue was here. So here's the blue that I finished it, and then there's the blue that it came with. Not a lot, but I do like the lighter color a little bit better. It, it, it almost matches, in certain scenes, the 1979 show. Certain ones. And then the gun came in all gray, and I spray painted that black. I left the targeting reticule gray, but then I used a gun to marker for the sight part, and that was gold. So let me show you what I used for those. Let me go over here. The yellow, I just used just a regular yellow gun to marker. And then I have, I just bought a pack of metallic ones and I was really itching to really try them. So this was a perfect kit for it. So the white, I used that to kind of start it, but then I used an actual flat white spray paint to finish it off. The gold, again, was for a little reticule. And then this blue was for the blue on the chest. So very nice with these markers. And then I'll use these at some other point with some other model. So how does this actually stack up with an actual high grade? Well, let me show you what it can, what it is. Now, bear in mind before I show you, this was when I was first starting out with Gundam. This is my very first Gundam model I put together. And I watched so many videos on putting them together, weathering, gunk washing, doing all that stuff. I tried to do it all at one time. And I think the results speak for itself that this is not my best job. But in some universe, the granddaddy Gundam will look like this. That's my hope. Some one of, in one of the infinite universes, the granddaddy Gundam looks like this. Seeing there's battle damage there and stuff like that. Don't ask about this. I don't know where it went. I'll find it at some point. It's okay. But side-by-side -side comparisons, I mean, the high grade, this is a high grade, is slightly taller than the entry grade, but... I will have to say that the entry grade is a little bit beefier, like muscle-wise, piece-wise, beefier than the high grade. The shoulders, to me, look a little bit wider, and it could just be the fact that I also have it gunked washed, so it's kind of shadow-slimming a little bit. But in the legs, I mean, look at those, look at the legs. 
these ones to me are definitely beefier than these. But you know, if you didn't, if you just built this straight and built this straight, stick them side by side. Someone who's never done this before, I bet you wouldn't be able to figure out which one's the entry grade and which one's the high grade. I, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be able to do it. So this has been an excellent, excellent reason to get into Gundam building. Because remember, this was $7. I got this, even heavily discounted at Hobby Lobby, for 11 And right when you know Hobby Lobby was starting to do an expansion into models a couple years ago. So, I mean, it's been awesome. So, final thoughts on this is, if you can find this, go ahead and pick it up. And then if there was any sort of um, experimentations you want to do as far as like colors or um, anything you want to try, go ahead and try it on this. It's a $7 model. If you somehow, I don't, I don't know how you can ruin it, but if you ruin it, you're not out a lot of money. And also another great thing before I go to the poll, something you're not seeing here is there's no stickers. No stickers whatsoever. So, I mean, you could say, well, this is the RX-782, but then you could put stickers on them and say, no, this is the insert random number letter combination here, ultimate Gundam Destroyer robot, and then paint it however you want. I mean, you can do infinite amount of things with this. So, I mean, that's been, this has been very impressive. It's been awesome. Two thumbs up. I can't recommend it enough. If you can find it, pick it up. Uh, just fantastic. Love it. Okay, now, that's the end of the final thoughts. So if you made it this far, congratulations. I'm proud of you. So now what I'm going to do is give you a little poll of what should be the next Gundam that we do an unboxing, build, final thoughts on. So your choices are... In no particular order, no particular order, I have the MS-07B3 Goof Custom, Principality of Xeon Ground Battle Mobile Suit, the nice blue looking thing right here. Okay, uh, let's see, this, this is what it looks like. Now remember folks, I have not opened these, I have not looked inside of them, I have no idea what's in them. So you're going to be looking exactly with me. Okay, next one is MS-06S Zaku-2 Char Azimals Mobile Suit, the 40th Anniversary Edition. So that's what that looks like. This one, I will tell you, if this gets chosen, a lot of this will be changed into... Like, I might use that metal, that metallic marker, that reddish one, for this stuff right here, just to make it pop a little bit more. So that's your second one, Zaku 2. And then final choice is MSN 06 Sinanju Neo Zeon Mobile Suit Customized for New Type Titanium Finish. This puppy. If this gets chosen, we are going to do this low and slow because this one's going to be a beast to do, especially not trying to leave nub marks on the titanium finish. But those are your three choices. Leave the comments down below of which one you want me to do. I'll leave this up going for two weeks. So June 15 is when I go ahead and tally everything up and then make a video of which one we're going to do. So stay tuned. Go ahead. Like, if you like what you saw, like the video. Subscribe if you want to. Leave a comment down below of any critiques of the video, things you'd like me to do, stop liking me to do. Vote for your next unboxing. And... If it's your birthday today, happy birthday, happy birthday to you and you and you and you. 
and then we will see you next time. See you later, folks.